Hi guys and welcome to The Colorful Gardener. My name is Josh and today I just want to give you a vegetable garden tour um, around my garden. If you're new here, go ahead and consider subscribing for more gardening tips and tutorials. Okay guys, I am standing in my vegetable garden. I really haven't showed you guys a lot of of the vegetable garden. I've showed you a lot of my different theme gardens like my jungle garden and my perennial garden. But I haven't really showed you my vegetable garden and I'll be quite frank, um, I have been kind of timid about showing it because it's not, I don't think in my opinion, as grand as the other ones I've worked on. Um, it's until this year that I've really gotten into vegetable growing and finding plants that do really well here in the southeast, which can be a challenge with the heat and humidity. Um, but I'll go ahead and just give you a little overlay of what my garden is. So it's about 20 by 20 feet of uh, raised mound beds. I don't use uh, like the standard wooden beds a lot of people use. That just became too much of a hassle because in our heat and humidity, the soil would really dry out quickly. They're like pots. Uh, so what I did is I just let them be mounds instead of like in these little decorative boxes. So got over that. Um, no longer have the square boxes anymore. They're just mounds of soil, which is done really well. Um, every spring I put in compost into the garden soil to really improve it and um, around the edges of the garden there are shrubs and trees. So on my right over here, you can't see it, but I'll, I'll do a shot of them. There are two apple trees, one's a Fiji, I'm sorry, no, one's a Honeycrisp and one is a Granny Smith. And then on my left over here are three blueberry bushes. So what, it, what these shrubs and trees do they frame this garden this small vegetable garden and um, they really make it seem like a room in here eventually i'd like to get an arbor uh, right where the camera is right now and so as you walk in, it's like a nice little room you're walking into um what else okay so right now we've got a lot of stuff growing that love heat and humidity and i'm just going to take the camera and i'm just going to walk around a little bit okay so you may have noticed there's a fence around this vegetable garden and that's to keep Sophie out of the garden. Um, she has a really bad tendency of digging and playing in things that she's not supposed to. So the first day we ever built the raised garden beds, we came home and just found they were destroyed. She thought they were a playground for her. So up the fence went to keep her out and they're very, sh the, the fence is short. Um, <laughs> we had them there since she was a puppy. So I guess she realizes she can never jump over them or never try to again. She probably could if she wanted to, but she never has. Anywho, um, so what I'm gonna do is just go row by row of what I'm going. I've got about one, two, three, four, five raised mounds. So we'll go um, just row by row. And I'll go ahead and show you that in every raised mound I have drip irrigation. Um, you can see right here, this is spaghetti tubing and every morning comes on for about 45 minutes and waters uh, the vegetable garden. It has been such a wonderful thing to install um, in my garden because it has helped keep the soil moist. It has kept um, the job of constantly coming out here and watering um, much easier for us because it was a pain because in our heat and humidity, the soil can dry out really quickly. And so you have to really stay on top of that. And by having drip irrigation, that really helps with um, watering. So I've got three spaghetti tubings running through this garden bed. And I'm just pulling out some weeds. As a gardener, you constantly see it, and now you're looking down, you know, when you're looking down, you see all these weeds, and you're like, oh my gosh. Okay, anyway, so in this bed, I've got two rows of uh, two different vegetables. So in this, I've got cherry bomb peppers. Um, Louis loves these plants. I tried saving the seed from them and getting them to germinate. They just did not work. So I'm going to look online and see if I can find some places to buy some more cherry bomb to, uh, cherry bomb pepper seeds. Um, he buys, he bought these from the farmer's market. He likes them because he can put them in a sauce that he makes. Um, really great plant. No disease problems, no insect problems. Just takes a while for them to germ, uh, takes a while for them to germinate in January is when I sow them and um, it takes a while for them to um, mature and form these bright red uh, let's see if I can nope they're all green right now they're all and it's middle of August so we got a little bit more time um, the next row over is dragon's tongue bean and this has been one of my top three favorite vegetables in the grow in the garden um, such a good plant 
because it can deal with our heat humidity bumper crop every year. It always produces so much beans for us and it's a short little plant, no more than a foot tall. Um, it does some, get some like some problems with the leaves, so I'll show you real quick. This happens every year with it. There's, I mean, there's, I'm not worried about that. A lot of, I don't get it. A lot of gardeners are just like all worried when their plants get upset, like get a little disease on them or something, or a little, little uh, distress on them, or they just don't look perfect. I don't get that. Just let the plant be, you know, let it see what happens. And, you know, they've got a little brown on the leaves, but I'm not going to go, you know, be upset because it has that. Um, because the plant is really healthy. I look on the plant, I see tons of beans. So this is dragon's tongue beans. And um, let me just show you. So it has this purple streak going through it. Really cool. Um, I'll get some better shots of that. But it, the reason why I like it so much is A, it's prolific. B, it tastes really good. I've tasted other bush beans and they just taste kind of bland. This tastes so sweet and so good. Um, I grow this in my garden every year. This will stay in my garden every year. I have, I've grown other bush crop, uh, bush, bush beans, and I haven't been impressed um, compared to the dragon's tongue. So dragon tongue is a, I recommend it everyone to grow it in their garden. Um, very easy plant, doesn't get really big. It's not like a, 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 a vine growing um, bean. It's a bush bean, so it stays small. You can grow a lot together. Um, they just grow in between each other's, uh, very close, no problems. And it's in the middle of August. I planted these um, back in April and they've been producing like crazy. Great plant. So I'm just going to go through real quick. I'm going to pick some. We'll see if I can up oh, this one. So it really doesn't matter the size on when you pick them. So this is perfectly fine. Let's see. Maybe a little, little late. I mean, some are not dark purple like this one is. Some are a little white and blanch looking. But it doesn't affect the taste at all. Okay, here's a perfect one. So down here. You can see it. That's a great, that's a good one. So about that size, um, which is way longer than my finger, but it, that's the perfect size. There's another one. Mmm, yum. And I come out here every day picking beans, and there's so many, and this is only a, one row of like 10 feet of beans, and I have so much then I'm going to end up pepper, uh, pickling these. That's beautiful. Another thing is, like, look at that. That, that. that is so pretty. That streaking, gorgeous. Okay. Okay, so here are the cherry bombs. They're starting to turn red. Louis likes, Louis likes these peppers. I'm, these are not my top favorite picks, but he likes them, so I grow them for him. Um, we've got marigolds on the end of each row to help with pests. I don't know if it really helps, but we haven't had a lot of pests, so I can't really say. Okay. Next row. This is, whoops. This next row right here is um, kind of a challenge. Uh, we initially grew um, snow peas on this little fence and then had lettuce growing. I've never really had good lettuce growing here in South Carolina. Everything tends to go to seed or bolt really quickly in our heat and humidity. Um, also Baker's Creek lettuce hasn't been really good um, germination so uh, I've been buying lettuce seed from them for a while and I'm going to stop and go somewhere else and get lettuce seed from because this, this germination has sucked. Um, so what I've grown in here instead are little tiny, um, they're popping up right now, it's Malabar spinach. I was hoping to get them to grow on this little fence. And then we've got butternut squash, no, winter squash growing right here. And they've been here for about, um, three months and they haven't been doing much. I don't think they really like our heat and humidity. Um, so that's going to be a no-go for again for this year. Look how puny they are. And they, this is great soil. Um, and they just aren't really happy. I don't think they're liking our heat. So, won't be growing those again. Um, this is the second row. Okay, so this next row was actually my designate, designated um, garden bed. So most of these garden beds are actually Louis. I just 
help him when he needs help and give him guidance if he wants it, most of the time he doesn't. Um, but I'm allowed to have one raised bed and this is mine. So as you can see, there's a lot of young plants in here because at first I planted patty cake um, squash and I was suggested to grow this plant by uh, Roots and Refuge. They said it was a really great plant to grow. Um, it grew. The thing is, I discovered that there are squash borer beetles, or squash borer larvae, whatever, in my plants. So out they went. They were just rotted. Um, I think I've got pictures. I'll put them on the, the video. But um, just not a happy plant. And you know, more red on it, like squash borer bugs are a real problem. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just not going to grow those anymore. I'm going to grow um, table acorn squash. I read that was really good. I'm going to try that again next year. But instead, I was like, okay, it's the middle of like July. What am I going to grow? It's so hot and humid here and dry. What's going to grow? I was like, oh, how about some bush beans? So this bush bean, um, I can't think of the name. I'll put it on the video. But it has a dark green, a dark black bean on it. They've been germinating pretty well. They haven't been bothered at least, at least by the heat. Um, on the ends of the beds, there are marigolds again, and then there is violet sparkle pepper. And right here is asparagus. I don't know the name of it. Louis did not save the package of seed from Baker's Creek, um, so I can't tell you what kind of asparagus it is. I don't really like it. Um, he never picked the asparagus. I was the only one that picked the asparagus. Uh, and. I mean, after, you know, in spring, after you pick it, it turns into this. I mean, this could be a nice, like, bouquet filler and stuff, but I'm not really crazy about asparagus. Like, it's not a bumper crop. It's just, like, you get, this year I got three little sprigs of asparagus. Um, I think it was more of an impulse buy for him, so hopefully I'll be able to convince him not to grow it anymore so he can plant, like, a whole row of beans and have, like, pickled beans all the time. By the way, let me go ahead and just pop this in my mouth. The dragon's tongue, it's watery, but it's not like bland tasting like a lot of bush beans are. This is like really sweet. This is gonna be, I'm gonna try to pickle these because they've got so many of them. I love pickled anything, so. All right, so this is the third bed. Okay, this is the fourth bed and this is Black Charant's Peanuts. And what we do with our peanuts is that they, they do so well here in our garden that we crop rotate them um, through each bed. So we're kind of going through counterclockwise. So th that last bed I just showed you, and we had a, um, I did a video about how to harvest peanuts. Um, I did that bed. So this year we plant them in this one, and then we'll go, we'll go counterclockwise around our garden with peanuts because they're nitrogen fixing, um, very easy to grow. In fall time, when the plants have gotten their first frost, we'll dig them up, save the peanuts, eat them for through winter time, and uh, have them. But um, here in the shadiest part of the garden, um, they've got this fence right here. They've got a Chinese holly, so it's a lot of shade. And I was just curious to see if the peanuts would grow here at all, and they've actually done really well. This has always been the hardest part of my garden to grow anything because it's really shaded. But again, it's still hot and humid here in the south, so um, I thought about lettuce or I'm just gonna keep looking, but anything that likes light won't grow here really well. So like peppers, mm-mm. Okra, mm-mm. Tomatoes, mm-mm. Um, so I'm just gonna keep fiddling around, see what does really well. I know peanuts will do really well here, but this is Black Charon's Peanuts, and it's a great plant. I don't think it's available on Baker's Creek anymore, but if you look around, it's a great peanut to grow. The, the peanut has a really interesting taste to it. Okay, sun is coming out, so I'm gonna try to do as quickly as possible. Um, I don't have a lot of time because this garden is definitely in full sun. Yeah, all shade for sure. Um, behind this camera is a uh, water oak, so it shields the sun for about two hours in the morning, and then the rest of the day it'll be blazing sun. Um, so that's why I came out and was doing this video as quick as possible, but. It's either really bright here in the south, or it's really dark. You don't get it in between. There are no clouds today, for sure. Okay, 
So in this bed is the fifth and final bed. Um, we had a row of zucchini growing, but zucchini has gone, come and gone. They did their thing. I'm not really impressed with zucchini and squash anymore because at least here in the south, they go over so quickly. Um, the cucumbers have been doing really well. So there are two types. Um, the first one is the serpentine cucumber, which is right here. So here's a little baby. And it's rotted, totally rotted. Um, this is kind of near the end of its life. We've been getting a lot of great uh, cucumbers from this one. But as you can see, it's really pale yellow. Um, eventually this is gonna have to come out. And this variety, I don't know the name of it. I'll put the name in the video but it's also near the end of its life. And Louie planted some cabbage in here, supposedly uh, heat tolerant. <sighs> I don't think it's gonna do anything. I don't think it's gonna grow. Or I've been, I've been surprised by his choice of plants. Um, right now, he just sowed the seed about a week ago, so nothing's up yet. I mean, I've been wrong with my choice of plants for sure. But, um, so we got cabbage coming. So, yep. And also, this has been put in. I don't know what to think about it. It looks like something out of the Blair Witch. Hopefully the birds will like it. So, to my left, I've got Thai Roselle. This has done really well for me. I've grown in the past. This is the best it's ever looked. Um, no flowers yet. It'll usually set flowers out in later fall and then I'll get the red pods, which I'll save for teas, for jams, whatever, really. But I'll definitely be growing it again because it has been super happy here at the base of this, this honey crisp tree. Okay guys, um, it's hot. Even in the shade, it's getting super humid. And I'm gonna go inside and edit this video. But I appreciate you guys watching these videos and seeing if they help you at all. Again, this is a southeastern garden, so plants we grow here love heat and humidity. Um, we're not gonna grow lettuce and um, the fun stuff like broccoli and uh, cauliflower and things that like cool temperatures, it's just not gonna happen. Um, we're gonna grow things like okra, tomatoes, peppers, beans, things that love the heat and humidity. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you are new here, go ahead and consider subscribing for more gardening tips and tutorials. Again, my name is Josh and you've been watching The Colorful Gardener. Thank you for this impromptu garden vlog, uh, garden tour, um, mishaps, failures, successes, whatever you want to call it. Bye guys.